Well, I'm planting the last of our tomato varieties in our mulch demonstration. And first thing that I'm doing is just putting a couple of tablespoons of fertilizer, of a complete fertilizer mixed right into the planting hole. And what we're planting in is a, a black plastic mulch that's on a raised bed. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but this is a tomatilla tomato, often called a ground cherry or a husk tomato. And it's a little bit different. You'll see it sometimes in the exotic food section of your grocery store. And as the fruit comes off, we'll talk to you about those a little bit too. But first thing, again, we've mixed that fertilizer in. We've cut a hole in our plastic, and then we'll just plant that tomato plant just like we normally would, and we'll water it in with a starter solution. Now, the raised bed idea has a lot of benefits. One is to help keep the water from standing around the plants. So it's raised up, we've got good drainage, and the black plastic helps heat the soil up a little bit earlier. Now, another great benefit is the fact that it helps keep weeds from growing up around our plants so we have less weeding to do. Now, this particular plastic that we planted in is called photodegradable. And if you'll remember last fall, we did a little segment with Dennis Scott who talked to us about his watermelons and he used black photodegradable plastic and this one actually will degrade in about 60 to 90 days. And what happens as the sun hits the plastic, it starts to deteriorate and breaks apart and hopefully you won't have to pick any up and haul off to the trash and that's one of its benefits. Now on our second row, we have another type of plastic which is another photodegradable and this one actually is uh, supposed to last about 30 to 60 days. Now one of the negatives on these photodegradable plastics are that once we built the beds, we just pulled soil over, raised it up, and then we covered the edges, the outsides, with soil. Since that area is not exposed to sunlight, what happens is the top will break down, but this that's covered will remain. And this is some of what is left of Dennis's demonstration last year that's blowing over into our demonstration gardens. And again, it's not exposed to the sunlight, so it's not gonna break down as easy. So there are some negatives with this, but a lot of the commercial operations are using these types of plastics. And they're also using this concept, but they have the commercial implements to actually design the beds and lay an irrigation line down the center as well, like a drip tube. Now this is just another type of black plastic, but this one is not photodegradable, so it's gonna have to be physically pulled up and removed and hauled off. The difference on this one is it comes in a different color on each side. This side is black, which you can see, and this is the same product over here, but it's got white on the other side, and we've put the white side up because it actually helps reflect the sunlight a little bit more during the summer, which is very beneficial, and there's also some research that shows that it helps keep away some of the insects. Now, when we're using the black side, it warms it up quicker, but it also is gonna get very hot during the summertime. So we put some straw mulch just to make it easier for us to walk through our beds where it holds a lot of water. But if we don't get a lot of good coverage from our foliage, we're gonna have to mulch over the top of the plastic during the hot summer to keep it from getting too warm and cool it off a little bit. Now again, this is just another type of uh, black remay that we're experimenting with. We're very familiar with the white remay, but it also comes in a black color, and we're just experimenting to see how it will do. And then again, we've got the white side of the black plastic that we're using as well. And we're just using different varieties of tomatoes just to see how they'll do in the different mulches. Now another thing I'd like to show you that we're trying is using floating row covers. We've got two rows of the raised beds again. We've got a white plastic side showing and then under the floating row cover we've got the black side. We've planted some squash and what we're using to frame our row covers with is just some rebar stuck into the ground and then we've just got some old irrigation tubing and we just slip that over the top and that gives us a nice little frame. Now the floating row cover, this particular one is called Grow Web and it was sent for, to us from a company in Texas called Indico. And just a little bit different weave, but the purpose is to cover the plants before they come up to help 
provide a barrier to keep insects from feeding on them. Now, of course, squash is going to require pollination from bees. So once the plants start growing and blooming, then we'll remove the floating cover so that the bees can come in and pollinate them. But at least we'll get anywhere from four to six weeks of protection to keep those insects out from feeding on our plants. Now, if you wait too late and put the covers on after the plants are growing, you may have trapped insects in there, and that obviously could cause a negative result. So we'll let you know how these things are coming along, but we also want to take you and visit with you in a research center in Lane with two of our specialists, Dr. Bob Cartwright, who's our entomologist, and also Dr. Warren Roberts, and see what kind of research they're doing that's very similar to this. Well, one of the advantages of our show being produced by Oklahoma State University Extension Service is that we also have access to some of the research that goes in at our research farms. And today we're here in Lane, Oklahoma, and we're down doing an educational training for some of the extension agents, and we wanted to come over and visit and see what some of the research was going on. And I'd like to introduce to you uh, Dr. Warren Roberts. Warren, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Thank you, Steve. Now, you're an assistant professor, and your uh, main area is 100% research and vegetable production. That's correct. Well, first of all, Warren, tell us where we're at as far as the research station. We're in southeastern Oklahoma in Atoka County. The uh, station is uh, uh, located fairly close to Texas, fairly close to Louisiana, give you an idea of the, the region that we're in. Uh, we're Trying, serving primarily the southeastern part of the state here with the work that we're doing. Okay, and the title, the official title of the research station is? <laughs> we're at the West Watkins Agricultural Research and Extension Center. Which is really our newest research station in the state. That's too. correct, that's correct. Well, Warren, I find it interesting to see some of the research that you're doing here. Tell <laughs> us about the demonstration that you're doing, the project that we're standing in right now. Okay, Steve, partly what we're trying to do here is develop vegetable crops that can uh, be produced uh, commercially by the growers in this area. Uh, we're looking at several crops on the station here. Uh, one that we'll be looking at today is cabbage. Now one of the uh, problems that we're trying to overcome in this area is that we get quite a bit of rain here. Uh, in fact, uh, last year we had about 72 inches of rain wow. out, of, out of the 12 month period. A lot of this rain can occur in the spring months and one problem that we can have, these soils can at times be uh, too wet, too wet to work or too wet particularly to get machinery through. Mm -hmm. So partly what we're trying to do is devise a system that we can get the crop started while the ground might be otherwise too wet. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing with the raised beds then, I guess. That, that's correct. Uh, by growing plants on these raised beds, the rooting area for the plants is much better than it would be if you were not on the raised beds where the, the roots would be growing uh, into wetter soil. All right, so better drainage. And of course, we've talked about raised beds on, on our show before, and we've constructed some in our studio gardens as well. But in addition to the raised beds, you've got a couple other things going on here too. Tell us about that. Okay, well, one, it all ties back, I think, to the, uh, the soil management, partly to the raised beds and that the raised beds, if they are not protected by some kind of a cover, uh, soil erosion can be a problem. Okay. So we're, we're trying to develop a system that we can produce commercially, but we want to stop uh, soil erosion if we can. So we're looking at different kinds of mulch. Uh, some of these are uh, the, what you might call the cover crop mulches and some of the okay. synthetic or the plastic mulches. Okay, well let's walk up and look at some of these. <laughs> these plants that we're going by now are just on plain raised beds with no mulches whatsoever. That's right. And then this first one here is actually black plastic. Now, what is the advantage of the black plastic? One thing that it does is uh, it modifies the soil temperature. Uh, usually it will warm the soil temperature over what you might get in the bare soil. It will also uh, stabilize it. You don't get the real fluctuations or swings that you might get in bare soil. So it's a it's a steadier environment as far as the temperature goes. And just observationally, it looks like the plants on the black plastic are a little bit further ahead in, in producing mm -hmm. and growth than the ones without too. Is that a good statement? That, that's a good statement. We see that most of the time, that uh, the growth is used a little better, uh, particularly at this time of year when we do get uh, warmer temperatures under mm -hmm. there. We also get some moisture conservation okay. with the black plastic, not as much evaporation. And right. usually we will get faster growth and quite often a higher yield. 
under and we might plastic. mention too you've got drip irrigation tubing mm -hmm. under the plastic which is a common practice as well to provide the irrigation mm -hmm. during the dry periods later on in the production that's right the drip irrigation works really well under the black plastic because we uh, that's one of the best ways to get the water okay. under the plastic now let's walk over here and talk about these tall uh, grasses that we see that's another part you, you mentioned uh, cover crops what do we have over there Warren? Well the crop is rye it's the annual rye uh, winter rye commonly grown uh, just as a, as a grain product uh, this normally is grown as a cover crop we've taken cover crops and modified it slightly in that yes it is a cover crop in that they are seeded in the fall they're allowed to overwinter on these beds but uh, where we're modifying the system we are not plowing it we're not mowing it we're not tilling we're simply planting our crops in this case cabbage right. directly into the rye with no tillage and, and that's what you've done here now you have have gone in and sprayed this ahead of time with Roundup which is a herbicide mm -hmm. non-selective to burn back the rye grass and then you have just planted directly in it that, that's correct we uh, sprayed with Roundup when the rye was approximately 18 to 24 inches tall and then we came in just a couple of days later and planted the cabbage directly into the standing rye. And that might be a question that some of you are thinking about. What about the herbicide? Why isn't it affecting the cabbage? And we talked about this earlier, the uh, glyphosate or Roundup, uh, really there's not any kind of a carryover. Once it comes mm -hmm. in contact with the soil, it becomes inactive and it dries on the grass, there's, there's not any problem either. So it's only harmful to the things you spray it on and afterwards that's, that's we're correct. safe. That's correct. Now one thing that we've noticed too, uh, Warren, is there's not any weeds growing where the ryegrass has been planted. Uh, what is causing that? Uh, rye, along with some other plants, has what we refer to as allelopathic properties. Mm -hmm. uh, what this is, is there are certain chemicals, and there's various numbers of these chemicals, that are given off by uh, several plants, uh, maybe all plants if we really knew Steve. Uh, black walnut is a real good example mm -hmm. of this that a lot of growers are familiar with mm -hmm. if they've tried planting tomatoes close to the walnut. But certain substances are secreted by the roots of the living mm -hmm. plants, which tends to uh, either inhibit germination or perhaps inhibit root growth right. of other plants. And we might show them too a, a <laughs> shot of one of the raised beds where there wasn't any herbicides or any ryegrass planted and you can tell there's plenty of weed competition out here so it really does have an impact on it. That's right, it's, it's been a very marked response this year that, uh, w that we're getting from, mm -hmm. from the rye. Well you know Warren, we appreciate you showing us this, of course I'm sure you have several things to complete on a research project but I think we can still learn a lot of good things from it that raised bed gardening does give us an advantage over mm -hmm. wet periods and a little bit earlier warm up obviously the mulches work work wonderful with the plastic and then we've talked a lot about cover crops too the benefits they have and so hopefully you'll uh, be able to share these things eventually with commercial growers but mm -hmm. as far as homeowners we can still get a lot of applicability from them as well and we're going to be trying some of these things at our studio gardens too and, okay. and hope that you'll come by and visit us there and we want to thank you again for inviting us out. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge both classic and contemporary.